great pleasure to welcome to What's Next, Robert Timmis, who is the CEO of Emergent Energy and the fund manager at Fed Group Green Energy Fund. Uh, and I'm looking really forward to this discussion, certainly very topical. Robert, uh, great to have you with, uh, with us. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Aki. It's great to be here. Listen, we're going to be talking about something that everyone's talking about right now, and that's solar power. You guys have been talking about it for a long, long time. But solar power, the silver lining of an ongoing energy crisis. Now, energy security is really critical. We've seen this. We've seen the vulnerabilities around energy security globally, not just here in South Africa. It's a topic that's relevant uh, across the world, but particularly here in South Africa, obviously, when we've got uh, load shedding the way we have at the moment and, you know, many hours during the day where people don't have energy and yeah. those conversations are around solar energy and how it can help alleviate South Africa's energies, uh, South Africa's energy emergency. Um, now, tell us a little bit more about the feasibility and the growth of solar in South Africa. I mean, obviously, we're seeing lots of people. I was at a conference the other day and I asked how many people have uh, got solar right now installed. And I think it was not even 2% of the room had put up their hands. I said, how many of you had solar two years ago? I think one person put up their hand. And then I said, how many of you? are going to be installing solar in the next six to 12 months. And then, you know, and 30% uh, of people put up their hands. So there's obviously a lot of interest out there for solar. Is it is it feasible? Is it something that's going to be uh, v working? Will it work in South Africa? Will it take enough strain off the grid? You know, it's a very topical um, item at the moment. Aki, like you say, I think energy security is, has been a, a long-term um, play. I think, you know, looking at energy security, it's not something you can just do overnight. Um, solar specifically, though, has been around in South Africa. We've been building solar plants for 12, 13 years, um, and it's not necessarily been on the, off the back of energy security. I think that's the most topical element of energy, energy security at the moment, and I'll get into that a little bit now, but I think the, the underlying asset, the solar system itself, which exists to push out uh, energy from the grid, instead of uh, pulling from the grid effectively, it's push it out so that you can draw from your rooftop uh, in simple terms. So that offset or exchange um, has been the basis of solar plants for, for many, many years. And while there's an energy security benefit or addition that I said I would get to in a moment, the main element here is swapping, let's say, dirty power, unreliable power, expensive power for power that you can control and generate renewably clean and green on your rooftop or in whatever shape or uh, form that comes in. And I think the business case or the viability and bankability of this type of asset class of solar systems has been around for a long time. It has been accelerated into the media of late because of energy security, because of very recently the increased tax rebates that are, are in place for solar systems. Those, in, in fact, have been in place in the country for many years um, and assisting with the industry to grow. So the energy security side of it, um, which is the most topical at the moment, I think ironically, a lot of the solar systems we, we talk about or people do talk about don't really secure power. They are not there when the grid is there. They're an offset and you need batteries and inverters um, in order to, to provide that grid reference to produce power during load shedding. Obviously, the more solar you've got, the less reliance or strain or pressure there is on the grid. And that's true for many uh, other um, energy uh, generation plants So solar uh, being the current one of the cheapest out there. So it's come to the fore very recently, like you said, for from an energy security perspective, but it has been around for many years um, mm. on a very bankable, very viable basis to swap out the more expensive ESCOM grid for cleaner, cheaper power that you can generate yourself. Mm. Okay, no, that's interesting. And uh, and I, I do remember many years ago being at an event uh, for Fed Group and you guys have been talking about solar for a long time. In fact, I, I remember a demonstration where one could invest in solar panels, download an app, and you could see in real time how much money and return you're getting on your investment. So uh, yeah. you guys are a financial services company. Um, and hence, I'm talking about the reference to many years ago. You saw the opportunity, and we're talking about solar today. So recap for us, why is Fed Group? looking at solar as an investment when you're a financial financial services company 
Yeah, I mean, I think many years ago, I think what's about seven or eight years ago at the moment, um, Fed Group foresaw the energy crisis at the moment. But at that point in time, we had started some form of load shedding. We knew, and and I think most people in the, in the globe looking at it would know that there was going to be a transition away from from your more typical conventional power stations, coal, um, going away from centralized energy production, which is big power stations in Pumalanga and around, to more decentralized or distributed power stations. And those are the smaller ones that we have in the Northern Cape, solar, for example, wind in the Eastern Cape. Um, and, and that whole change was was fairly well understood. And the like I said, the backability of, of energy being produced very reliably from solid technology, um, we knew that that's what we wanted to get into. We knew that, that there was uh, an opportunity, an upside for an investment case. And what Fed Group has done is, is, is allowed the general public to participate um, in that by purchasing a panel that is installed on a commercial or industrial or retail uh, shopping center for that matter and share in that saving that, that is being generated for the landlord and, and create a return for the investor. So mm-hmm. a financial services company, we, you know, yes, they're a financial services company, but we are able to distribute money and, and deploy capital into these markets because we are primarily solar companies and impact farming companies and farmers. And, and um, it's not that we are deploying capital, finding places to put the money. We have been farming the sun for many, many years and seen the returns and seen the benefits and thereby attracted or brought in external capital and uh, investors to, to be able to share in those um, those returns. And then, of course, as well as you, I mean, you, the, the price of energy, uh, you know, eight years ago versus what it is today, has just cool. gone up. So that increase in energy is, um, you know, re- yielding a higher return on what you're selling the energy for to your customers. So those panels are already generating a lot more power. But you've you've learned a lot of things, and and you know, obviously there have been barriers uh, that you've experienced rolling out solar power projects across the country over the years. And it's something that you guys have perfected. Every time you do a new installation, you're always adding more optimization. What can be, what what has been done to overcome these barriers? What have been the learnings over the years through your solar projects? Well, I think firstly, one of the biggest benefits of, of having a solar construction company so close to a financial services company is to be able to piggyback off their due diligence processes and their um, it's at the more onerous or the more detailed due diligence that that, that, go, that happens when you are looking at a customer or looking at a solar project. That has helped cement the bankability of the um, of the assets that we we build. Um, but you know, generally in the industry, one of the most difficult things to do is to look at previous consumption of a of a property and use that to predict the future. Um, that's where the due diligence comes in. That's where there's a lot of oversight from. The credits and investment committees that we have in house, and the and the technical experts looking at a property and understanding how they've used power in the past to say, we're going to install a new a new power plant on that uh, property, and someone will consume that energy, which is solar in this case, um, in lieu of the grid. And obviously, we need to be able to understand how that business will operate, how the property functions, all the energy usage on that property, so we have comfort that our solar system will produce power that is used thereby generating that saving and hence the return to the investor. That's the one one barrier. I think the second, which has changed um, externally really, is the regulatory environment. And um, as I mentioned earlier in the media, there's been a, a lot of uh, coverage of the increased tax incentive. There's been a, um, a lot of uh, media around the increase in the cap or the limitation of how, how large these plants can be. Uh, it was... 18 months, 24 months ago, where it was limited to a measly one megawatt, um, yes. which in the context of South Africa doesn't make any difference to the grid, if, if we're honest. Having that cap completely removed has materially changed the industry. It has effectively opened it up that private power producer can go out and build plants that can take a serious dent or make a serious dent rather into the national grid um, when we get to scale, when we have more of these going out. So the regulatory environment has really helped underpin the acceleration of this type of product being put out there, which is you know, solar as a primary energy source um, for businesses to, to consume. 
Okay, they're very, very interesting. And I guess those incentives do stimulate the market. But uh, if, you, if you're a private owner of a home uh, versus a big business and you're building something bigger, the, the, the benefits are better. I mean, I think a home only gets something like 25% on the panels that you put up, which is, it's not a massive incentive. It's something, but if you're a business and you're doing a bigger installation like you guys are, there, there are better rebates and, and incentives to do this. But installing solar solutions can be an expensive exercise. You know, you talk about, okay, the panels have come down in price. They've been continue, continually coming down over the years. But, you know, lithium ion batteries and storing the energy, that's where it gets quite expensive. What are the options available to companies and individuals out there? Look, I think as an individual, there's, um, you know, you can put you can put a solar system on your roof and, and most of us who who would do something like that would be at work during the day and not really consume the power when the sun is shining in the middle of the day and then you need batteries to store it to use it later on. You also need access to capital. It's, it's you know, solar is cheaper today than it was five years ago, 10 years ago. But certainly in the last two or three years, it's actually become more expensive from global pressures, the increased demand, inflation, etc. And with that comes a complexity of choosing the right supplier, choosing the right equipment, maintaining this the system, all for your own saving at home on your electricity bill. And what Fed Group has done is allowed individuals or retail investors to participate in larger projects where you have experts that have been in the business for many years, like ourselves, um, that will go out and do the work for you. We will select the right equipment, ensure that the projects are built to the right standard, um, and then allow you as a retail investor or, or an individual rather to participate in that um, return. Um, so you don't have to do it yourself to get the benefit at home and all the perils and risks that come with it. You can participate in a commercial scale project and effectively get the same return. And in that process, we are able to raise capital for larger commercial and industrial projects, um, thereby putting panels on a roof, renting that roof from a landlord, or alternatively selling him power at a cheaper rate than he would at the grid. He generates a saving our investors are getting their return from their investment into the product. We construct, maintain, operate, and manage the fund um, that holds the assets, and everybody wins. It's it's one of those Cinderella stories that there isn't a loser in the in the room because you have mm. the landlord using the power at a cheaper rate than ESCOM generating a saving, like I mentioned. You've got the investor getting above market returns that do increase each year as ESCOM and NERSA increase their prices each year. So we build quality plants, we have sustainability, we are swapping out coal for renewables. It is that, it is that good. Yeah, I mean, let's unpack that for a second. I mean, through Fed Group's innovative uh, impact investments, investors can share in the financial returns that are generated from the commercial solar installations that you spoke about a second ago. Um, and, you know, there's various options and you guys have got the contacts with, you know, the landlords and the roofs and all that sort of thing and generating the income. Tell us a little bit more about this and how it actually works. So, Aki, if you if you download the Fed Group Impact Farming app, you, like you mentioned earlier, you can, you can buy a solar panel. So you procure a solar panel, you invest 7,500 rand for that panel, and that money goes to paying for the overall project, which obviously consists of more than just the solar panel. Um, we build that project after having found the landlord, done our due diligence on the landlord, on the viability of um, that landlord or, or user of energy consuming our solar plant power for 20 years. We will then construct the plant, maintain and operate it. Obviously, the solar plant will generate electricity. The electricity is sold to the landlord. And with the income we receive, we would then repay the investor to the tune of their return. Yeah, and it's a pretty straightforward, you know, and, and 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 obviously you guys cover all those costs because when you say seven and a half thousand rand on a on a on a uh, on a solar panel, there's obviously the clips that you've got to use to attach it to a specific roof. There's the cabling that goes into this. I mean all that stuff costs quite a bit of money and I know because I put solar on my roof. So the, you know, the, the installation and all those things cost quite a bit of money. So it's, but once it starts generating, boy, oh boy, then it gets exciting. And and I guess that's what I want to ask. What makes it 
uh, solar such an attractive investment option. And for me, when I look at the, the lifespan of these, and I, and I guess the, the ones you were talking about that you guys installed eight years ago, you're still obviously yielding a pretty high megawatt hour per panel, right? And they're still going Absolutely. strong. Absolutely. They, um, I think the, one of the underlying benefits is that it is a very reliable and predictable technology. Um, it is passive in a lot of ways. There aren't moving parts. Yes, there are electronics, but once those panels are up, of course, you clean them, you maintain. There's a lot of monitoring um, that happens, but it is very reliable. Um, and so the sun comes out. We know what the weather did over the last 15 years in our models. We use that data to predict the future um, weather patterns. There's some variability, but over time it gets ironed out. Um, and the electricity price we know is going to increase each year. And when it increases above our expectations, investors' returns are higher. Um, and it, it just works because it's so reliable and so predictable. Um, and once done properly with all the regulations, <clears throat> with all the regulatory requirements in place, um, it really is fairly smooth sa sailing from that point on. Yeah, it's a great investment option uh, when you look at it and when you look at the returns, uh, pretty pretty good as well. I mean, you guys have been involved in this installation of solar and uh, investments into solar for over seven years. What have, you, what have you achieved over those seven years? What are those tangible results that you can put down on paper, show, yeah. show your investors, show the, uh, you know, we, we've, we've saved X amount on emissions. Those numbers for me are quite interesting. They are. They're very interesting. And there's many ways to try and convey what we've achieved. Um, what I'd like to do is try and get that across in a way that's tangible. Like you say, I think talking about kilowatt hours and megawatts and it's, and trees saved and tons of CO2 can be quite confusing. Um, but in effect, we've installed the equivalent of what you've done at home. Your average house, I'm sure you've got a nice house, but the average house, uh, we've installed the equivalent of four of those systems every single day for the past 13 years. Wow. So it is a lot of solar panels, a lot of inverters, a lot of connections, a lot of due diligence. Um, and so we have quite a bit of experience in actually getting that done. And and the numbers do add up, and sure, you you might not see it on the national grid um, from a load shedding stage, but everything that everybody does will have some contribution toward helping defend us against load shedding and um, securing our energy for, for the future. That is so cool. And do you have an idea, Robert, uh, more or less, how many solar panels uh, you guys have on roofs? Have you you've done that calculations? I'm sure it must run. It obviously runs into tens of thousands of panels. Is there a number? We do. Um, I do not have the number off the top of my head, but it's definitely in my box. <laughs> if you give me a second, I'll pull it. Yeah, no, no. I'm just interested, and 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 just to 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 understand. You know, when you take down those those solar panels and you work out the average that they're generating in energy, that's energy that's uh, been saved off the grid. It's energy that's going into some investment, energy that's been going into a business to keep it running. And those for me, that, that's that's where the exciting part comes in. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you if you think to look at a number of panels, another number of solar panels, it's difficult to know how much um, yeah. impact that does have. Um, and that's why I think if you think about it in your own context from your home, home's perspective, um, you can say, well, you look how many houses we've taken off the grid. Um, but in, yes. in total, we've installed about 200,000 solar panels um, wow. well, last, it's, last month. It's astonishing. And, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that that curve probably you know started like this and, and is going like this because the demand is, is, is huge at the moment. And just globally, never mind load shedding, it just makes more sense to go that way in the long term. Robert Timmis, who's the CEO of Emergent Energy and Fund Manager at Fed Group Green Energy Fund. Robert, thank you for sharing those insights with uh, Solar. It's, it's great work that you guys are doing, and thank you for your time. Thanks, Aki. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. It was great. Thank you.